So how uh, house cases and uh, uh, and COVID going here in the Triad region? Um, well, um, I, I would summarize. <clears throat> we have had a wavelet about two weeks ago. This wavelet peaked. Although when you look at it, this is more like one of those very long rolling waves that comes in at the beach rather than the short high ones. Um, so our cases are coming down all by slowly uh, from that peak two weeks ago. Um, we're at officially at 23 per 100,000 uh, per day now um, here in Forsyth County. Guilford's about the same. Mecklenburg's a little bit higher in the low 30s. Um, and that's uh, a fairly comfortable range. Uh, our hospitalizations um, are hanging in there at kind of a low level um, and hospitalizations don't change as fast, but it does seem like those hospitalizations here in the triad are dropping somewhat slowly also. Um, so our activity is going down and that's confirmed by uh, um, our sewage numbers um, and uh, we're COVID can be picked up and what people excrete and um, those numbers are also slowly coming down. So all the data kind of points in the same way that this wavelet is decreasing. The variants in this area right now are, um, if you're a variant follower, um, is BA uh, 1.21.1, uh, which is an Omicron um, subvariant um, and has been what's been circulating in the United States now um, since uh, mid-spring. Um, we have been seeing a slow increase of BA4 and BA5, which is a variant that first uh, was identified in South Africa. It's a little bit more transmissible than our other Omicron subvariants that we're seeing. Uh, certainly no more severe, uh, and it's an open question whether it's any more invas uh, evasive, so getting around <coughs> our immunity. Probably not much so. So I, I really don't see much of a problem with that variant. Uh, don't see any other variants on the horizon now, but those uh, do tend to come up quickly, so we'll have to keep our eyes open for that. Just a lot, you know, so the vaccine's safe, looks like it works, but should I really get my vac kids vaccinated? And so I hear the following questions. One, I thought that COVID wasn't that severe in kids, so why vaccinate for it? Well, um, that's true. It's not as severe in that age group as kids as it is in older people um, or people with underlying health problems. Uh, but we still see, uncommonly, but we still see hospitalizations and rarely deaths uh, in that group. Uh, in fact, if you look at it right now, for all of the vaccine preventable diseases that we think about in kids, measles, mumps, um, whooping cough, um, pneumococcal infections, which is a bacteria, meningitis. Um, right now, more kids are getting COVID and having serious effects and deaths from COVID than any of those others. So of all the vaccine preventable diseases that are out there, the one that's causing the most deaths right now is COVID. So if you look at it from that way, it would say, yeah, you know, if I'm gonna immunize my kid for meningitis, I'd never think twice about not doing that. Then why not do it for COVID? It's actually more likely right now. Um, the second thing is, is that um, COVID can be um, disruptive to a family. So if you have a child in day daycare and they get sick, with a cold like some symptoms, you get tested and you're positive, well, you're out of daycare for a while. Um, and then that means you have to arrange uh, different child care and so on and so forth. And then they can bring it home to the family. I've known several families who've gone through COVID as a family lately, um, and most would rather avoid that. Um, and so, uh, so that's another reason to get vaccinated. 